Welcome Sojourners. This is Jonathan with Sojourners Awake. This was an exceptionally fun module to run, the Crypts of Azaru. And the one shot turns into a two shot, and maybe the two shot turns into a campaign. We're not very sure. However, the Sojourners have already left the church and are diving into the crypt to find Sister Gariel and Father Baird. And so for now, our story continues. Entrance is into the crypt beside the well. You want to go look? That's where we're headed, right? We're headed into Did the crypt. Did you just ask us? <laughs> Gosh! You go down into the well. <laughs> so, if you want, you enter in this small circular room walking down the spiral staircase the cellar is moist and cold and a little bit of water and rats creak by as barrels of foodstuffs and everything's been stored and you see that there is a well that is placed down uh there is a well and i'm actually going to send you a map Sister Gariel is down there with you, and to your surprise, there are two acolytes of the Church of Luck. All right, so as you enter this room, Sister Gariel leads you, and there are two acolytes. They're simply just going through foodstuffs and everything. Um, you have two, You have a question about this scene as Sister Gariel leads you in. She just points to the well and says, as far as I know, down that ladder, down that well, is the paid mons mausoleum of the Church of Timora. Those who have made the biggest donations can get the right to be buried there in an expedite fashion and get their souls transferred to Arborea where they can enjoy all the travel and luck they their, their eternal mortal souls will desire. And as you're in this room, Bertie, what is your question about this scene? This is a chance for you to build upon the world that is fashioned before you. And again, like I always say, just because it's not on the map, don't let that limit your imagination. The map is just that simple grid pattern that we use during combat. Mm, do I see anything that might be something hostile? Yeah, one of the acolytes is hunched. His hood is pulled very far over his head. There's a foul odor mm -hmm. about him. Dandelion, I what's your question? Uh, Danny Lyon's looking around and seeing food, and so he wants to know what food there is. Okay. Uh, there's like lots of salted meats, pickled preserves, stuff that's, you know, designed for a harsh winter. And, uh, and he wanted to know if there was anything above the well that could be used to lower things down. Uh, yes, there is. A little like trolley. A little uh, dumbwaiter. Mm -hmm. Joel, what are you, uh, what's your question about the scene as you build upon it? I don't know. I don't know, actually. Uh, well, you're in the cellar, you're stepping down one level, and then you see that the well drops down with a ladder, and there is a dumb waiter that descends into the well, and all around you are very simple provision supplies. The two acolytes that are in the room, minding their own business, going about their duties, like Birdie noticed, you also notice one of them appears to be a little bit too hunched, as if he has a back problem. Very foul odor coming from him. And just to catch you up, what we're doing here is um, the the sister basically indicated that this came from the crypt, mm -hmm. that the father might be missing, he might also be undead. So we're going to go into the crypt to go hunt for more answers and finish the job we were hired for. And so uh, this is the only entrance into the crypt that we're aware of is this well. So we're yeah. heading into the crypt with, with the bone, just in case the father needs us to wake him up. Okay. Yeah. And then did you just ask me a question before she talked that you're so yeah so as you're i mean just because i didn't describe it doesn't mean it's not necessarily there so this is your opportunity to ask a question to build upon the scene i see the person's hunched with a foul odor um are, are both of them this way or is just one of the just one of them is uh are they interacting with each other no a antonia as you build upon the scene what sort of questions do you ask? Oh, uh, how are the acolytes? Are they sitting almost like they're guarding the well? Like, why are they here? Yeah, they look like they're just kind of 
maybe restocking supplies. You know, maybe okay. one of them has a clipboard. He's kind of just making sure things are uh, up to date. They have duties in the middle of the night. So is it okay if I ask him that? Sure. Like, but before I, I you, go, yeah, that's, well, that, that's a great question as we're building upon it. So Ted's going to ask his question and then we're going to go into the scene. Sounds good. Ted, Ted go so, and build upon this. Yeah. So Sister Garyel, is she reacting to the acolytes in any way? She does a sideline glance to the one that's hunched over and you can tell she's about to go check on them. Uh, and you start to hear her say, are, are you okay? Okay. Yeah. And then the second question is, uh, is down the well on the ladder the only way out of this room besides going back up? Would you like to go check? Yeah. Heck yeah. High risk, high reward. <laughs> Dumb question. All right. So at that moment, Kay, as you lean forward to look down, you turn your eye over to see Sister Gariel place a hand upon the acolyte. The acolyte pulls his head back and you see it is indeed a human or once was, but its skin is now ghastly blue. Its body and spine have been contorted into an undead creature, but unlike any mindless zombie you have seen, this one has fashioned clothes. This one was intelligent enough to disguise itself. And seeing as Sister Gariel was the one closest to it, he reaches forward and grabs her to pull her down the well. Everyone, roll initiative. top of the initiative, the goals are gonna make their attack. So one of them reaches forward to paralyze Sister Gariel, but as you know, elves are immune to being paralyzed by ghouls due to their heritage. So Sister Gariel just merely shrieks out in pain as she is grappled by this goal. This goal then uses its movement and pulls her down into the well. She goes screaming. The other acolyte, um, uh, well, actually Kay sees this. Kay, two more ghouls, bust up from the well, poised to attack. Here comes some more. Yeah, so Sister Garyeld gets taken down. Uh, the Acolyte get taken down. So two Acolytes and Sister Garyeld have been grabbed at the top of the round and being pulled down this well. Two extra strong ghouls. And again, you see that these are residents of Phandalin. Their decaying forms have not taken place yet. They appear as a lumberjack that supposedly died in a logging accident last week. And the other one is a horseback rider that was supposedly killed by a wild bear. They have now been resurrected as these ghastly creatures. The other two goals characterized by the skeleton heads are barely recognizable. So the challenge in this situation is, of course, surviving the onslaught of these undead creatures pouring forth from the well deciding how and when to go rescue Sister Garia on the Acolyte and how to pursue with your mission at hand. Kalna? All right, so Kalna, you are at the top of the round. What would you like to do? Um, unfortunately, I don't actually know what any of my spells do. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, am I, is the wizard somebody who can do like, um, like crowd control? Uh, or, like what is Earthbind? <laughs> Earthbind, great. Like, would it, would it grab them? Is that what it's intended to be? Is something that binds them to the earth or that's just a pattern? I'm... I like that. So what's your um, intelligence modifier? So that's accurate. I can bind them to the earth. Okay. It is and now. how many can I do? Is it one at a time or is it crowd? <laughs> well, it, it depends on how powerful you are. So what's your intelligence oh. modifier? Oh, sorry. My intelligence modifier is plus two. So two plus three, so plus five. So that's gonna, that's not bad. That's gonna be a 15, uh, uh 13. So they're going to have to make a save. Um, I'm going to allow for two of those creatures to be bound into the earth. And so as you channel this energy, you begin to pull the rock and the sand and the silt begin to move up through the gravel and the, the church stones. Um, they're going to make their save versus your 13. It's going to be a six for one and a 12 for the other. So both of them are currently restrained, yes. which means any attack on them that's melee or ranged is going to have advantage. So I'm going to, you're actually pretty close to them too. So we're gonna do the red dots. Ding! Red dots are restrained. And 
Uh, Kalna, you're in melee range of these ghasts and these ghouls, and you can see that they're trying to throttle you and take you down with them. Oh. Okay. Uh, um, with the risk of incurring an attack as you move out of their direction, would you like to move out of their direction uh, or take cover? I can do this in the same round. I can both earth yeah. find them and also move. Okay. And you can move, yep. Okay. Um, uh, well, yeah, then I'm going to um, I'm gonna dash back. back. <laughs> okay. They're going to try and take a swipe at you. Okay. Um, but they're restrained, mm-hmm. so they get disadvantage. That's going to be a 17 to hit you. Oh, cool. That's good odds for them. <laughs> the, one that's, uh, the one that's about to hit a um, dandelion will cutting words him. Be like, not so fast there, dead guy. What? By the okay. way, what am I rolling? So I'm going to take off three. So it's a 14. Oh, is that, is that three from the damage or three from the attack? Three from the attack roll. Okay. So does a 14 okay, so now hit I have you? To a 14 or above, but no modifiers. No, on does my a 14 side. hit your uh, armor class? Oh, my armor class. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Oh, I have a 14 armor class. So it does. Still hits. Right. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, you tried to use those cutting words, and he just seems to spit in your face, and he, the goal just says to you, Dandelion, surprisingly, yeah, you're not funny at all. It takes a slash at Kalna anyway. Uh, Kalna, you're going to take nine points of damage. Oh, shit. That's, That's not pretty good. bad for a wizard. That, that hurt, by the <laughs> way. Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up in the initiative. Is it me? Friday. Don't keep track for me. Friday. All right. No, it's Friday. Oh. All right, Friday, you see the situation. The acolytes are, of course, dragging, being drugged down the well. Uh, you can see that four stand in the way. So the, the interesting thing is you see the earth has moved up through the silt and the rock and has grasped the legs of the two ghouls in red, thanks to Kalna. Um, any attack on them will have an advantage. The other two are also ripe for the picking. So my yeah. focus is time is, I know that this is happening, but time is clicking away and the sister's been drugged down the well. And are there currently uh, dead things like attacking, coming up out of the well, like in a stream still? Or is or is just the deck where we're at the only place where there's actual um, entities coming, like trying to attack? There's only four total entities. So the stuff's not coming. So the well, is accessible if I wanted to do a quick move around them and jump down to try to go follow for the sister. That's possible? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> do I need to roll for that or can I just do that? Uh, it's going to be a high risk, high reward. So I would like you to make a athletics check or an acrobatics check. Okay. Uh, I do it based on what I already have. I've got a, right? I have a plus five on athletics. Right? Oh, yeah. That's pretty so good. I go, so I'll pick athletics a plus five and I roll for this. Okay. Yep. 11 so that's totally 16. okay so you're able to like just do like a backflip kick up over one of the goals um you are going to still take three points of damage as he barely screeches scratches you by but that's going to afford you the opportunity to continue with your movement down the well and you still have your action So, I can so you still can, like, yeah, like you I see can. what's interesting as you look down the well, the ghouls are not taking the acolytes and sister Guriel all the way down to the crypts. No, they move a stone in the base of the well and they are, they're moving now under the earth. Okay. So this is a secret entrance. Horizontally. Mm. Exactly. All right. So, uh, uh, just catch me up. What could an action be? Like follow them down that hallway or that corridor, or, you, or would I? Could I slash one of the? Okay. As I'm going past, can I like try to take damage against one of the uh, uh, entities there, undead? It, as I'm it, going down the well, like what? Would yeah, as I be? as I perceive your intent, it seems like you're bent on rescue. Yes. Yeah. So well, I think to make sure we track where she's can, being drugged. Can I ask to. a quick question that might yeah. give some perspective mm-hmm. too? Uh, what classes we have? We have a barbarian, so we have somebody who's a fighter there. What is Dandelion again? Bard. Oh, you're a bard? Okay, so you've got a little bit of firepower there. And then what are you, Kay? I'm a fighter. I mean, I'm a, I'm a monk, but I'm, I'm, 
I'm an, okay, I'm an so attacker. Fighter heavy. Okay, so it wouldn't be like he would be like, I'm the only fighter here, so no. therefore I probably <laughs> shouldn't run away. Okay, so we're like tank heavy, so we're like fighting heavy. And, okay. my, and my thoughts are, I'm scouting, even more so than getting into an altercation. I have no idea what's down that corridor. Where are they taking her? And someone needs to follow and track that, almost scout it out. Yeah. Otherwise, you might lose track. That's basically my intent here. So. Yeah, so what you would, yeah, you could easily do that. And with your movement, you see that they move 10 feet down the well and they begin to go horizontal in. I mean, you're booking it with your speed. You're able to get down and tail them. So you have an opportunity to stab at one of the ghouls with uh, one of the acolytes in his hand. And you can see the acolyte is completely paralyzed. And this ghoul is just dragging the acolyte by the ankle. So if you want to go ahead and make an attack roll, yeah, I do. Yep, go for it. All right, a four plus, is it four? series of plus three, strengths of plus five. So you want to go for strength, so. Whoa. I rolled a four. Four plus eight will be a 12, that actually hits, yeah. So then you're gonna take your, if you have the diamond dice, roll that and add five. The eight sided. All right, I got a oh, six, plus, yeah, 11 total. Ooh. Half of its hit points, nice, 50% damage. You just cut through the goal and its back arches and you are now kind of like um, locked into this tunnel, both on your hands and knees, reaching forward and you just stab your blade into the leg of this ghoul. Well done. And you are, you're tailing it. So Friday's down the well. Next up in the initiative, number K, that's K. you. Yeah. Oh, gosh. She sees Frode go down the well. I think she's going to smack this ghoul closest to her with her quarterstaff. And then um, and then she'll make a move. Uh, that's going to be a 12. Uh, you should have advan advantage. Oh, advantage, yeah. Yeah, that's better. 18. I haven't rolled off this thing once when we've been playing the other game. I just rolled off three times. Uh, that's going to be nine. Nine points of damage. Nice. And then she's going to hop into the well and follow Frode. That's going to be two opportunity attacks if you're willing to risk it. Yeah. All right. A nine and an eight. That's not going to be good enough. You definitely move down the side. And you can see the same thing. You're moving down the well. You see the secret entrance. And now you're crawling on your hands and knees as you descend the well. Next up in the initiative, Dan. So uh, Danny Lion just seeing two of the fighters jump down the well is going to run and hide behind Birdie. <laughs> and, um, I, all, the, all the people that here have, have gone down the well. Let, 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 let Bertie, save me. And then he's going to throw a dagger over its back at the one that Ted just hit. Um, throw advantage. Uh, advantage. Advantage. Oh, I got a natural 20. So hit him seven. And then uh, with a bonus action, he's going to healing word um, the, the the wizard. He's going to heal four, what? seven points of damage. Oh, much obliged. <laughs> oh, well, maybe we'll be all right after all. Sorry, I spoke too soon. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I got trounced and everybody's running down the well. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <And> I'm like, <laughs> don't abandon the wizard. <laughs> yeah, the wizard, squishy wizards up, left up top with four ghouls. This is great. Uh, Birdie, you are on You are on a call here. So what are you going to do? Rage. All right. Um, I have wild magic when I rage, right? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Forgot about that. Can I just say, Ellen, I have missed Birdie a lot. I'm so happy to be playing with Birdie again. Are these your one-shot characters, or because you guys just got done like with a really huge year-long um, campaign, right? We're still playing that, but um, Ellen and I played in a maybe like five or six session game before where Birdie was involved, and mm. it's a fun character. Mm. And are these characters that you guys were familiar with too, or did you roll them up for just this game? Uh, no, I just rolled her up for this one. Okay, Birdie. I guess so. Oh, here we go. Ready? Roll a D one hundred, please. Okay, you cast mm -hmm. Levitate on yourself. Nice, Birdie. So Birdie, yeah, Birdie, as you begin to rage, you feel yourself like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory begin to float upward towards the ceiling, which I would say is about eight feet. So while you're floating on the roof and kind of bouncing up against the roof, completely buoyant, 
you are still able to make contact with these ghouls. It's just really hilarious. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of point myself down and I'm gonna like swing um, my battle axe on top of which whatever one has already received damage. There you go. You're going for a 12. Go for it. And it has advantage because he is currently restrained by okay. mud and rock. Wait, plus two with raging. So nine. Nine points of damage. And with that, the ghoul's head is split asunder, leaving it in a pile of undead, disgusting terror. And you see, Birdie, a glowing green object falls from its body. Mm, I picked that. I can I can I I can't move. Can I? Uh, you still have some movement, yeah. I'm gonna move, like float down and grab it and put it in my pack. Okay. It looks very much like a human vertebrae. Okay, I'm gonna throw this down the well. <laughs> all right. So, round two. The ghouls are all going to make their attacks. Uh, the first one's going to retaliate against Joel. It's going to 17 to hit you. My armor's 15. My health is currently 37. So here we go. Okay. So, so you're. Th- it's going to be nine, uh, nine points of damage to you. So it's just like clawing back at you, kind of kicks you in the face with its foot in retaliation for you stabbing it in the leg. But it continues to move on taking the Acolyte with you. So rules as written, as it's moving out of your melee range, you get to burn one of your reactions by taking one simple attack against it. If you are successful, you would end its life. Okay. All right, go for it, roll attack. Uh, Two plus, what, strength and dexterity? So five for strength, three for dexterity. I I rolled a two, so it probably didn't Yeah. No, it didn't happen this time. So it kind of moves out of the way and the blood kind of just blinds you in the eyes and you swing wide. And the Acolyte is paralyzed and being drug deep further within the crypts out of your reach. Um, oof. All right, Birdie. Well, this one's actually restrained. He's kind of tied down. I'm levitating too, so oh, yeah. can you reach me? That's bad. Well, one of the ghouls rushes down, chasing after Kay and... Frode, one of the ghouls is going to stand their ground against Dandelion, take an attack. That's going to be a 12 to hit you, Dandelion. 14. All right, you can see it's trying to throttle you and paralyze you in the same fashion by uh, suffocating you and then bringing you down the well. However, you are successful, you are just fine. Um, The other one's going to try and break free from the magical restraint. So, Antonia, if you would give me your spell save. So, 13. Yeah, so it rolled a 6. And so you see that it's still just held together by this soft silt uh, anchored in the ground. And you can see that it's trying to go down the well. It doesn't seem like it wants to fight. It is drawn to something of great power down beneath. So, um, for intents and purposes, the Acolytes and Sister Gariel are being pulled out of the initiative. So now top of the round, Kalna, round two, how do you want to resolve this situation? Okay, so we only have one more, we have two goals, one that's earthbound and then the other one that's free. Mm -hmm. The earthbound one got smacked already or no, it hasn't been. No, it the other one that got smacked is dead because right, Birdie finished off. Okay, Mm -hmm. um, so the one that's earthbound that has not been hit at all, as a, I'm sorry, I'm going to betray my total ignorance about this, but um, uh, I'm assuming that wizards do not get into melee, if at all possible. So yeah, um, they don't get into melee battle at all, right? Like I'm, I'm supposed to be distant and doing stuff at a distance, right? I, typically, because they just don't have that great of health. So, okay, that's yeah. what I'm assuming. That's that's what that's my read on this. I'm not supposed to go like, poke it with a dagger or anything. All right. So um, then that leads me to uh, what are my offensive spells uh is um i, I don't see. know what any of these spells are unfortunately and so gotcha I don't gotcha um any of them are offensive to I'm be honest y- yeah you're not much of an offensive character but okay. let's see you can do like is the snowball swarm something that would be painful oh yeah that's awesome okay yeah that one's good okay i'll try to snowball swarm the one that's earthbound well he fails automatically oh <laughs> Because he's restrained. Because he can't move. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you can roll 3d8 damage then. 3d8. Okay. Uh, 7, 8, and another 1, so 9. 
in total. Nine points of damage? Okay. It was pitiful. It's okay. It's a, it's a light drift of okay. snow. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm chilly. <laughs> it's a little I cold. I need my mitten suddenly. <laughs> so between earth and snow, this ghoul is being uh, tormented with his magic. Um, next up in the initiative, please go Frode. How do you want to proceed? Frode, you're about to go off the map. Is that your intention? Um, well, he kind of slashed back at me. I, I missed this. Like, it didn't work out. And he's been drugged further down, like, mm. the tunnel, I guess, the area there. Yeah, yeah. So I think I decided to go back up. I'm like, I think they got away from me, but at least I know the direction they're headed. Okay. And uh, I was hoping I could just, you know, slash and maybe get some answers or something. But I just know where they're headed, so I'm going to go back up the well and see if I can help out. Maybe take the rest of the party down with me later. Well, you can see and you can use your action, this uh, snowballed, earthen, muddied creature. He's a ghoul. You can tell he used to be a lumberjack in the town. And he's just writhing and looking at you wildly and snapping maniacally, trying to get down the well. And you see that he is just easy target at this point, if you just want to slash at him. Yeah, I do. All right. Um, go and roll your damage then. 20 plus 5 strength and 3 dexterity. You, you got a 20 on the die? On the die, yeah. Oh. Nice. So that's what's called a natural 20, and that means oh. at a 5% chance you get to do double damage. How apropos! Oh, it's so beautiful. Like, he's just stuck there, and you just walk up so ever so coolly and calmly <laughs> and just place your blade behind its neck. Um, roll 2d8 then, and then add your 5. 2d8 is what? The... So two of those. Oh, two of the... Okay. Uh, first one's three... Second one is one, so it's four total, and I add what to it? Five. Add five to that? Okay, so nine total, all right. So he just like walks up, slashes the ghoul, and he just slumps over the side, but his body doesn't completely collapse because he's still held in place by this mud statue, and the snow just continues falling down on top of him. Next up. Now, you said that there's a ghoul that came down the came down the the uh, well after us, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, where am I in relation to that ghoul? Uh, it uh, snuck past you. It snuck past me? It did. It scurried its little body past you. What? Uh, you have the chance to do an opportunity attack, but it Heck moved yeah. past you pretty quick. Okay, so if you want to injure it, or maybe kill it, if you can do 22 points of damage. I cannot. Okay. <laughs> oh, I rolled a nat 20, though. Okay, nice. With what What are you hitting it with? Uh, I'm imagining there's, if I'm on my hands and knees, I can't hit it with my staff, so I'm just punching it. Okay. Roll some real damage. Nine points of punching damage. Nine points, okay. Bam, you snap its leg, and you can see that its kneecap is, like, dangling, hanging loosely as it crawls on hands and knees, and it is booking it past... Um, continuing down the crypt. So you have the choice. You can follow Frode back up into the well, reconvene with the party, or continue to move on. And in your echo, you hear the beginnings of the cries of the Acolytes and Sister Gariel. Well, she's... Uh, my movement, my speed is 45. She moves mm -hmm. pretty quick. So I'm guessing that she can catch this guy. I just want to know your intention. You want to yeah, keep going? She's, okay. Yeah, she's going to get this guy. All right, well, you're... You're disappearing from the initiative then as you move on down the crypts and we'll get to what you see in just a moment. Okay. Next up in the initiative, Dan. Um, which is the ghoul in front of me? Is it the jockey or the lumberjack? It was the jockey. Okay. Um, so what he's gonna do is reach inside his robe, pull out like a handful of tiny tarts and start with wiggling a feather at him. And he's gonna catch Tasha's hideous laughter and he's gonna, you know, jockey up, giddy up, boy, giddy up, and see if he can succeed on a, a wisdom saving throw, or fall prone and be incapacitated with laughter. Okay, he got a six. He did not. He failed. All right, so you see this ghoul just overcome by this maniacal magic as you tantalize what little mind it has left. And it doesn't exactly laugh, but you can see that its jaw begins to make the motion of ha 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 ha. And it collapses <laughs> on the ground and just begins just seizing in place. 
it is now prone. Well done. Not bad for a bard. Next up, Birdie. How do you want to end this situation? Mm, so what's left? Uh, there is a, yeah, there's one ghoul that's uh, kind of floating on the, or not floating, but writhing on the ground as Dandelion's kind of messing with its mind. Yeah. And then there's the other one. Where's he at? Uh, Joel, uh, Frode killed him. He's just kind of oh, okay. like slumped so over to the one, side. One guy left. So the guy yeah. that's, all right. So I'm going to the guy that's laughing. Okay. And I look. And I look at him and I say, what's so funny? And then I just um, kind of, I'm still floating, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to, I'm just going to crack him. 19 to hit. It's a doozy. I think Birdie's going to take a second kill. Frode and Birdie. Usually. Yes. <laughs> 15 points. Ooh. Situation is resolved. Now quiet in this cellar, everything is as it was. With the exception that Sister Gariel is no longer here. You can see the blood, you can see the remains of foul, putrid, undeath carried around. And uh, Frode and Kay, well, Kay is still down there. Frode, one thing you notice is while you were down in that crypt, when you began to go into that secret entrance, you begin to hear these dissonant whispers and voices in your head, something very abyssal and necrotic something starting to reach into your mind as if it was calling you you were able to shake it off in the moment but k is missing but uh assuming the rest of you how how do you want to proceed um knowing that k is still down there in the wells so frode will start with you um hey guys there was some weird stuff going down in that well I almost had one of the entities, but one of the things that distracted me, there was some stuff going on. I could hear voices in my head. It made me feel weird. I'm really concerned that something might've happened to Kay. I think we need to go down there. Plus they have the sister. There's a secret entrance I discovered and I need you guys to see this. It goes a different direction than maybe you'd expect the well to go. Well, I mean, how is that different from usual? You're usually hearing voices, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what that means. I'm kind of not wanting to think about it. It makes me feel all crazy. But there is a secret entrance that they like went through, and I can take and show you guys that. I think we should go down there. I like secrets. All right. Frode, as you survey the ghoul that you just sliced open, you see that falling from it is another green bone. This time it looks like a rib cage. Mm. Birdie collected a vertebrae. Frode collected mm -hmm. a rib cage, and I believe Kalna still has the right humerus. Do I see it fall? Oh. I, I, I see it fall, and I go over and I pick it up and show everybody. Like, hey, look, yeah. this just fell out. Yeah, and as it uh, it begins to thrum and glow with a little more green light, and as you put it closer towards the undead, uh, the undead creature, this creature doesn't respond anymore as its life has been finally severed in undeath, ending the stasis that it once was in. But you're starting to piece together that easily enough, if you put this towards a dead body, it clearly animates life. And Kalna, you being a wizard, you've seen this kind of magic before. Describe to us how you know this. Um, this is, uh, is it necromancy basically? All right. Um, I say, uh, I'm, assume, I'm assuming in this world, like in all, fantasy worlds and necromancy is frowned upon and I remember back in my old uh, um, student days uh, all of the all the would-be rebels would play with necromancy and then we got a talking to and um, one of my one of my professors or whatever teachers showed me um, a little bit of what he knew about all of this and with a very stern warning to stay as far the hell away as possible and this is what i know um when i bring my bone next to birdies and or uh frodes does it glow as these objects get closer together they do and they have this magnetic pull that almost snaps your finger off frode your hand is just nearly cut through and it just leaves a little bit of damage as this ribcage just snaps into place near this humerus trying to assemble and then birdie 
uh, from wherever your vertebrae was held, I believe, in your pocket. Your pocket just moves forward and you begin to skate along closer and closer to Kalna. Is that a vertebrae in your pocket or are you happy to see me, Bertie? <laughs> um, I think I'm happy to see you. Um, <laughs> I don't think we should uh, put these bones together. I think we should leave them as far apart as possible. Mm. Yes, I think her. Leg bones. The bard's just singing in the corner. You. So I'll hold mine. You hold yours, Bertie, and Frode can hold his. Uh, I'm. I. I. I think it would be. Uh, I think it would be the, the rude thing to not at least attempt to go find Kay. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, did fr- the I, I does anybody have the piece of information of whether or not Kay went through the secrets tunnel or just went all the way down to the bottom? Frode does. Yeah. Okay. So, did did Frode see Cal? I mean, Kay. Um, Everything went through that side tunnel. Then I say we go through the side tunnel. Who's going first? Not I'll the wizard. First. Yeah. <laughs> Birdie's going first. She's levitating down until her levitation ends and she falls. Your your levitation ends, Birdie. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> you nearly like slide down the well. <laughs> yeah, so Birdie's going first. Who's following? Uh, I'll go. I'm, okay, yeah. Okay. okay. I appreciate taking up the rear. <laughs> okay. So Dan and then uh, Kalna is going to take up the rear. Kay, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Nine. Fail, fail, fail. Uh, ooh. You will have a negative two to all your constitution saving throws as you are down here. And the reason being is because while you're down here in the darkness, the smell of rot and long thousands of years of undeath begins to irritate your nostrils. But rather than being a putrid smell this begins to smell relatably comfortable and you find yourself humming uncontrollably what song are you singing in the darkness of this crypt oh gosh she is she's a kid she's singing She's singing Justin Bieber. She's singing Baby Baby. The whatever that one is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't know. Yeah, so this simple like pop song, all the it's great with all the kids and uh you've maybe always tried to fit in as an elf, as they are few and far between. Um elves look different than humans, very lithe and fair and necks elongated and their eyes nearly stretch all the way across their temples, much like insectoids. Their noses are nearly non-existent. Um, Using your senses here, Kay, in the darkness of this crypt, what is uh, one thing you sense, one thing you're paying attention to? So uh, she's, she's sensing that, that the tunnel is is a little longer than she thought it was and she's a little uncomfortable with her decision but she's so stubborn she's not going to stop and she can feel that she's catching up to the school so she's uh yeah she's sensing that she's catching up to the school and she kind of hopes that she catches it before she gets to any other ghouls or sister or anybody else um so that she can take care of this guy and uh and then maybe wait for or go back to the party and uh, and re-up. But she's she's single-minded to get a hold of this guy and, and beat him up. Make a survival check. Nine. Hmm. I feel like you're becoming lost. You tend to go down one path and uh, we'll find out if everyone catches up with you as there is a consequence that is due. However, Birdie, you are crawling forward, and I'd like you to make a survival check as you are leading the team along. And if you would just describe to me how you are tracking and how you are ensuring the success of your party. How I'm tracking? I'm looking I'm looking for footprints. I'm looking for any sort of path that was left. You know, is it is it 
like stone floor or? Uh, it, it begins as very natural floor, like a cavern was carved through here by some animal or some magical means. But as you enter into the cavern, you now see that this crypt is made from stonework um, of an ancient empire and strange symbols and ancient languages are carved upon the walls. As you run your hands through you on the stonework, you can see that it's been crafted um, by exquisite means, nothing that Thandalin has ever seen. Okay, my survival is, let's see, 15 or 19. Okay, 19. Not only are you leading your team off well, but you know that Kay has gone missing. And you quickly see Kay's footprints, and you also see the footprints of a very familiar father. Father's footprints goes off one direction, Kay's goes off another. Frode. How are you contributing to the scene? And this is a chance for you to ensure your success of your party to me. My mindset now, as we observe these two footprints, fathers go one way, K's go the other. Uh, it appears like, I mean, I, I know Kay better and she also appears very vulnerable. So my intent is probably to go down the corridor or the, the way that Kay went to find out what happened to her. Not that the father, it's just prioritization. So I think that I'm going to suggest to the group that at least myself and maybe one other person go down there and see if we can find where Kay went. Mm, and who do you take? Um, probably Dandelion. Dandelion. Oh. You should come okay. with me. And the um, rest of you guys can go the other direction toward the father. That's, that would be my suggestion. Don't break up the group. <laughs> We're stronger together. We can choose one first and then the other. But I'm a lone wolf. I, I forget that being in a collection is a good idea. So yeah. I argue with you a little bit. Yeah. I'm a wizard with 17 hit points. I stay with the rest of the fighters. But it's going to be faster <laughs> and leaner if I can go down there and see if Kay's down there. Yeah, you're not leaving with that many The entire time. group to have to come <laughs> all together. Frode, you do hear, and uh, Dandelion, you hear as well, Kay humming in the distance. So Dandelion's off to the side juggling his knives because he picked it up on the way down. He's just sitting Baby, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, humming along with them. Um, okay, uh, Frode, if you would make a, a survival check then. Oh. Dandelion, assuming you are following along with Frode, how are you contributing to the success of this tracking? He's using his good ears to kind of um, try and echolocate the, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the half elf. Elf, elf. Elf, yeah. Uh, go and make a perception check, Dandelion. Frodo, what'd you get for survival? 15 total. Rolled 12 plus 3. That is enough success, and you're able to track down Kay. You quickly see that she is kind of wandering down this crypt, and the crypt is deepening deeper and deeper into the underground. There's a pool off to the side, some stalagmites beginning to hang. You can clearly see that she is not moving towards the crypts, but deeper into the wilderness of the underworld. How do you respond to her once you now see her clearly humming to herself? I shout to get her attention. Okay. Okay. Wh what? Where are you going? I was, going chasing, I was chasing that ghoul. Isn't he right? Oh. Where are you guys? We're up this way. Come with, up, come with us. Okay, let's go. We'll meet back with the party. Okay. She's going to run past him. <laughs> Kalna, you uh, quickly follow after Frode, but not a moment too soon. You are going in the opposite direction. You find yourself like running, catching up really quick, and you find yourself in the underground, and Kay and Frode have now moved past you, going back the opposite direction, and once again, you are left alone. Well, no, I chase, I mean, I, I'd rather be chasing after big guys than to be completely <laughs> abandoned by them, so that's fine. Do, 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 do. And you keep going back up. Yep. Um, but Kalna, Kalna, what are you doing to contribute to the success of this party now? Um, maybe possibly take the helm as far as leading them in the direction of Father Baird. Okay. So uh, um, uh, we uh, can. You, I'm. I apologize. Can you paint the picture of the terrain that I'm looking at one more time? I apologize. It's okay. Yeah. So you're now walking. We're in crypts. There's multiple. Yeah. 
as you've oh, left the yeah yeah so Kay got a little sidetracked down these tunnels that led deep into the underground but as you move past those tunnels oh you said you, there was a cave that opened yeah up you, you're like, you're yeah. in this cave but you can now see the finely carved mausoleums of an ancient empire it's a language that you may or may not understand it's not common tongue okay uh if uh uh, if I look at it for a second, can I uh, determine what it does say? Like, can I make a... Yeah, I'll let you do an ar- arca- arcana or a history check, your choice. Okay. Whichever um, one you're better at. Arcana plus four and history is plus two. So arcana. Plus four. Mm-hmm. 17 plus four. Yeah, pretty good. So I'll give you the detail. I'll give you the the, the the skinny, and you can build on upon the details. But essentially, it is the ancient empire of Azarum, the pact between the vampire liches and the werewolves. As they banded together to enslave humanity, they were eventually overrun. And this is one of their crypts. Got so it. Build upon this, and possibly, if you do share this information, if not, how does it impact you? Okay, so so in this cavern that opens up, I'm seeing script. It's what you just described to me. How big is the cavern? How like does it feel sprawling, or do we feel like we're probably at the end of something here? Uh, no, it's starting to. It snakes off to the side, and you can okay. see that there is a large door that you're staring at right now. Besides many tunnels okay. leading, uh, okay. Father okay. Baird's yeah, Continue. Father Baird's footsteps go through the door. So you see a large twenty foot stone door that you're now looking at. Okay. And then, yeah, and then there's two tunnels, one K went down and one that you have yet to explore. Got it. Okay, well, I don't want to be here alone for too long, just long enough to state my curiosity. Then I uh, run back. To- uh, how do you relay this information to them? Oh, sorry. Um, so when I'm with the rest of the party, I go, uh, I think I just found the Empire of Azurum's crypt. Uh, there's some weird script in there. And unless I'm just fluffing myself up, I'm pretty sure that it's written in this ancient script that lets us know that that's the direction. And bonus, I'm pretty sure I saw somebody's footprints, uh, father, the father's footprints through this big door. So my recommendation is that's where we head next. Oh, you found crypt, script and footprints? That's a pretty good find, Matt. I, I found the, the whole kit and caboodle. Because <laughs> you're so close to the ground as halflings, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So, so if we, if we want to wrap all this up, I recommend that we go back into the uh, the Azurum room. You stand before this door. Indeed, the script is there. Warning of the frailty of humanity and the necessity to grow them for the abundance of the vampire and the werewolf kingdoms. This door looks pretty heavy. Hmm. So the Azarums were like made up of things that feasted on people. Okay. Um, so I relayed that bit of information too, in case we weren't all aware of it, but it sounds like we were. So uh, so this is where we need to go, and yet really nasty things probably live behind here. You see that the footprints lead up to this door, but it does not appear. It, it the, the footprints stop right at the base of the door, and then the door is shut. You have a chance for some questions if you want to build upon this scene. Ted. So what? So I followed them in there. Mm -hmm. Um, Are there any living creatures around? Or any animated creatures? Nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Do we see anything down here that would look like a like a workshop or an area where things were being assembled or where somebody might have been uh, home base to uh, to create some of this mischief? That is a great insight. However, in this atrium, this seems to be just a receiving center that leads straight up to the tunnels that lead back into the church. Frode, how are you looking at this door and what are your plans for entering into it? You question. see this door, there's a challenge in getting through this door that you stand. How would you proceed? So we're not in the room yet. We're still outside the door. You're in the atrium, right? And above you is the tunnel that goes back into the church. But the door is in front of us. We know it's going to be difficult to get open. Um, 
So my options are, I mean, our options are either to go forward through this door or go back up the tunnel, back to the well and back out. Those are like the only two options of which directions to move. And there is another tunnel that leads off. We just came yep. down from the well, there, back and back cave. Yeah, so there's three options. Yeah, there's one that Kay went to. Okay. We've been down there's there. one that goes back into the church and then one that goes through this door. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we should see if we can either push or pull this door as a collection together with our physical strength before we have to like rely on spells or any kind of weaponry or anything like that or tool sets. So why doesn't everybody help either push or pull this? I'm not sure which direction it goes. Let's try to open this door together as a collective group. Every get behind and let's go on the count of three and pull or push this. If anyone has no objections, that would be interesting to see. Who uh, everyone participates? Uh, Bernie's gonna wait, wait. Bernie's gonna roll her eyes at him and just smash it with her axe um, first. All right, uh, you smash it with your axe. Yeah, it just ricochets back, and Bernie lands back on her back, and you see that it's quite a feat to push this thing open. Uh, it's not coming down with weapon strength, that's for sure. Kalna, okay, you seem... yeah, we can work together. That's fine. <laughs> that was funny. The eye roll, the axe attempt, and then the, okay, teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Kalna hey, will put her hands up high because she's taller than pretty much everybody but uh, Frode and uh, tell Bertie, Bertie, why don't you get in here and push? You can push underneath me. Okay. So everyone begins to push. Oh, Kalna, I know, what you got? I, I know this is a dumb question, but before we all trample over all the footprints with our own footprints, um, it appeared as if Father's footprints came up to it, but then did we see any walking away? No. Like at the original? Okay, so, the, but there's no evidence that it went through, you said. Well, the footprints stop at the appropriate level in which the door should open. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, and and the the door goes all the way to the floor. Did we see any evidence of like a sweep of dust or no, has the there's door no broken? hinges? You just you know it's a door because you could read it. Okay, but that's it. But there's, like there's yeah. there's no other indication that this thing has been opened recently or anything. Mm. Okay, no. all right, all right. Yep, yeah, let's all so, push it. What's interesting is all of you begin to push this door, in the under the direction of your teams, who so you all begin to place your hands, and so. Um, everyone make a constitution saving throw and Kay is going to make it with disadvantage because she's humming uncontrollably to herself. Ooh. That's not good. 13. Rolled another one Ooh. with a halfling, so... Fail. Fail. Five. Fail. I, I was Kay. a... Oh, sorry. I was an eight and he was an 18. Okay, so Frode is the only one that succeeds. Uh, Frode, instinctively, you pull away because as you place your hands, you realize that as soon as your living flesh touches this door, it begins to withdraw the blood and exsanguate you from your skin. You instinctively pull back, but before you can alert everyone else, um, everyone else takes uh, six, uh, yeah, six points of damage. As you feel your hands begin to exsanguate and you, you you look at down at your hands and you can see they're almost burned as the blood begins to pool inside the doors and fill up the runes and the letters and then you hear a shifting sound and the door opens <laughs> well that was easy yeah <laughs> It was bloody awful. What I like is that, and, and you realize that had one person pushed the door, the, the, the division of blood would have been a lot less. And there inside the room, a beautiful mausoleum, very ornate stone work is a large crypt. The crypt lid has been pushed off from the inside. And they're standing before you with glowing green eyes, standing next to a half assembled glowing skeleton is Father Baird. He opens up his hands and says, welcome children. 
to the crypts of Azaru. And so for now, our story concludes. This has been a production of Sojourners Awake, using the wonderful content from thearcanelibrary.com, The Crypts of Azarum. And this one shot turned into a two shot, so we'll have to reconvene in a fortnight. And may your story continue. Thank you to TabletopAudio.com for wonderful background sounds and ambiance. Check them out at www.TabletopAudio.com.